Where are you, dude? What's up? <laughs> <laughs> All right. <clears throat> so you're gonna talk to these guys about a Quincy? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Shoot. What do you got for us? Um. Daddy made this big, huge um thing, and it's like like very deep, <laughs> almost at the end of the snow. And it's so heavy that you have to, it's so, the door is so small that you have to crawl in and out. Wow. That's it? That's all you got? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Alright guys, so that was the little man's take on the uh, Quincy here. Snow cave, whatever you want to call it. Uh, there's other options, uh, snow trenches that sort of thing. Igloos, if you're further north and you have the right type of snow for that kind of thing. Uh, which, you know, the Inuits kind of perfected, but <clears throat> I just wanted to, I just messed around. I dug this out more for him to play around in than anything. But I figured while I, I did it, I had a couple questions on it and I was kind of planning on shooting a video uh, to this effect anyways, but all right, so is the Quincy a viable survival shelter? Uh, of course it is, uh, and that's why the name's around, and that's why we all know about it. Uh, it was effective somewhere along the line. <clears throat> uh, I've seen, you know, planning on shooting a video like this, I've watched numerous videos on the topic on YouTube. Uh, you know, some people have done uh, amazing Quincy's. Uh, <clears throat> so this is not to detract from them, but kind of give you a little bit more tidbit of information if you will or just something to think about before you possibly end up in some type of situation where your first instinct is like oh X made a awesome you know survival Quincy that's what I'm gonna do uh, it may not be the best option so again this is just food for thought I'm not saying it's not a viable option because it certainly is but uh, just some things to think about, and there's a, uh, a couple of them uh, through the videos I've watched and stuff like that where people have, e have either totally left out the information or kind of glossed over it uh, as no big deal. So <clears throat> Snow Quincy typically uh, through definition is piling up of snow you know if there's not enough in the area. In this case I had a snow bank so I didn't have to pile it up. Uh, there's one concern we'll get to in a second, but uh, typically you have to gather all the snow up, let it set, uh, the crystals in the snow form back together, and that allows you to dig it out. Uh, again, in this case, I have a snow bank that I just dug out, so right off the bat, I saved myself a lot of time and energy, possibly, uh, in digging that thing out and allowing myself to sweat if I did that. <clears throat> so... Uh, you know, typically, if we, if we want to coin this a survival shelter or a survival situation where you do something like this, uh, I don't know of too many people that would have one of these at their disposal, but there are people that carry them, uh, and good for them, you know, doing stuff in the backcountry in the snow and stuff like that. I've seen a lot of people pack them, but the majority don't. So in that case, now you got to gather up the snow, which is going to be a lot of work, uh, depending on what you have available for resources to help you accomplish that, uh, you know, is on the individual, I guess. Then digging it out, uh, again, if you don't happen to have a shovel with you, uh, you're down to, to these, you know. So now you're all up in here digging this out, or you could use a stick for that matter, but a stick isn't going to pull all that snow out. So again, you're down to these and your feet if you wanted to kick so that's it out. the one concern <clears throat> all right doing all this work and uh you know perhaps allowing your body to sweat and let's just talk on that note for a second on why why would i even need one of these type of shelters uh obviously it's cold out <clears throat> maybe it's in the negative temps with a wind chill and you need to get tucked on tucked in somewhere to get out of that so uh, without anything else going on, just what you see here, you're probably talking 
high 20s to low 30s Fahrenheit degrees inside the shelter and of course you know your body heat will warm that up as well uh, I would never recommend having a fire inside one of these things even if it was contained uh, I've seen people do it is it right is it wrong uh, I'll leave that up to you me personally wouldn't do it so we got the sweat thing next next concern are you dressed properly all right so now if you're digging around in the snow and what I have on is all wool right now is that the best for this case I would say probably not uh, if you're dressed in the latest synthetics and snow type gear ski pants and the likes uh, you'd certainly be better off but back to the sweating if you're in there working building up a sweat and you have to take that stuff off to keep yourself from sweating what do you have on under that is that going to get wet because at the end of the day if it's minus whatever out with a wind chill and you're trying to tuck in here to keep warm and you're wet you're gonna freeze <laughs> so again something to think about uh, and then there's there's other stuff uh, it's said that a candle will heat a space like this uh, I would have to agree with that um, what what else a candle would do for you is detect uh, too much carbon dioxide perhaps or better yet lack of oxygen so if you had a candle going inside of one of these things and you don't have a nice straight strong flame and it's flickering and doing all this bit uh, lack of oxygen in there which is the next thing I've seen people cover the door on these to keep the window uh, and this may or may not happen I'm not saying it would but just something else to think about uh, carbon dioxide poisoning and I'm not talking about carbon monoxide but carbon dioxide which is breathing in the same carbon dioxide that you're breathing out also known as hypocapnia so uh, you know something else to think about so I've, I've seen people do the little holes in the roof to allow airflow uh, that's obviously a good thing but uh, you know again just just some things to keep in mind um, you know it's, it's one thing to go out and build a Quincy and call it a survival shelter in a video and it it looked like the Taj Mahal you know glass windows in the side uh, not glass but ice blocks for windows in the mm. sides and all that sort of thing nice bed of pine boughs you know all that stuff is good but don't go out there thinking that that's your first option when it may not be the best option so uh, that's basically all this video is about uh, like I said I've had a few questions I was intending on doing it anyway just for those simple facts all have to do with safety again if I allow myself to sweat or get wet digging this thing out I'm gonna freeze at night alright so then you know there's other things to consider as well like cold sinks uh, you know people have done again some pretty fancy Quincy's but uh, all a cold sink is is one spot in your shelter that's dug lower than where you're gonna sleep to allow the cold air to sink down into that area uh, another good technique for sure but uh, again I just wanted to touch on you know a few safety things that I've seen left out or out of most videos that I've watched um, just so maybe you have a, a better understanding or, or you see the big picture of it and uh, go from there so we hope that helped right bud yeah <laughs> <laughs> do you like your fort yeah yeah all right, guys, thanks for joining us. We appreciate your support, and we'll see you in the next one. Oh, so can I tell you one thing? What? You're not going to hit me with that snowball again? No. I'll knock your other teeth out. <laughs>